Welcome back to uh, my series about this false inclusionism gospel. And I have to say that this is one of the most cleverly packaged gospels uh, that's out there. I mean, it's way more hard to spot than the obvious work salvationist, the, the load the back door with works salvationist, uh, lordship salvation, all of these different things that involve work, work, work. Um, the origins of it is what I want to talk about in this video. Now, there is a group called Grace Communion International that promotes this. And some of you may not have heard of them, but originally it was called Herbert Armstrong's Worldwide Church of God. Now, when their founder died in about 1986, um, and the son, Garner Ted, couldn't hold the whole organization together, it branched off. This particular group sprouted up, and they began to reject a large number of the false teachings that Herbert Armstrong taught, mainly being um, um, anti-Trinitarianism, and also um, that you had to keep the Sabbath in order to be saved. Uh, these false doctrines got cast aside, and in fact, they polished up their uh, their doctrines so well that they got into the uh, mainstream evangelical groups. Um, problem is, they they teach a gospel that is false. Uh, this inclusionism gospel, and I want to read something directly from their website. Uh, but before I say that, I want to also explain that the Bible says in uh, Ecclesiastes, and I know I've read this before in other videos, says, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new? It hath been already of old time, which was before us. So, with every generation, Satan just changes his tactics something, somewhat. And this type of teaching could really trip up grace believers. You see, it, it can resonate up to a point with what is being taught in the grace community. Uh, for example, we believe that that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, he paid for the sins of the whole world. Um, that is not standing in the way of an unbeliever uh, going to heaven. What's standing in the way is believing the gospel, and uh, because those that go to hell have rejected the Son of God. That is why they are there. Um, because... The Bible says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And, and I want to point out something that I was meditating on. Um, it's found over in Luke, and it's the parable of, of the rich man and Lazarus. And let me find it here real quick. And I want to show you something. Now, this, this man that went to hell, he had a concern. Even in hell, being tormented in the flames, he had a concern for his brethren. Um, he says over in the 16th chapter of Luke, um, starting in verse 27, Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, speaking to Abraham, that Thou wouldest send him to my father's house, that's speaking of Lazarus. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. What are Moses and the prophets, by the way? It's the word of God, the Old Testament. But they wouldn't believe it. But see, even in hell, he was concerned about his brothers. Um, 
which really gives us a powerful insight because God says that he's willing that none should perish. He doesn't want to send people to hell. That's why he died for the sins of the whole world. That's why Calvinism is such a wicked false doctrine that says God only shed his blood on the cross for the elect. Well, who's the elect? Um, so that gives me the right to say, oh, that wicked person over there ain't never going to believe, so I'm not even going to bother with them. No, no. Our ministry of reconciliation is such that, that everyone is eligible for the salvation. Everyone. There is no person too low on this earth uh, that is way too low for the gospel. Everyone is eligible. And these kind of thoughts, though, can get twisted into this inclusionism gospel. But you see, Jesus Christ said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Even on the cross, he loved his enemies, these people that, that were mocking him and spitting on him, and they scourged him, and they nailed him to the cross. He did all of this for love, because he loves mankind. Which, uh, by the way, I heard a news article that Justin Trudeau, uh, Prime Minister of Canada, I guess he corrected some woman for using the word mankind, which is a biblical term, and, and said that she should be using people kind. Is there no end to the stupidity, folks? But anyway, getting back to this, um, it, it is important to understand what the Bible really says about these uh, sound biblical principles that Jesus really did die on the cross for the sins of the whole world, that he really does love the whole world, that he wants to reconcile the whole world to himself, but, but people must believe. If they do not believe, then they have rejected the Son of God. And there's something else that, that I've been thinking about. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. Okay? And yet it also says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So how do you reconcile those? Well, friend, have you ever been angry at someone you love? And could it not be a righteous anger? Because you see uh, what could happen if, if only they would do the right thing, but they don't. Um, have you ever been angry with a loved one? Now, God in His holiness and His perfection is never ever angry in the wrong way. You see, God is angry with the wicked every day, but He wants them to believe on His Son. That's why He sent His Son into the world to die for the sins of mankind. Um, so, these, these thoughts, these, these uh, doctrines that come from the Bible, uh, they get twisted and maligned with this Grace Communion International. But I also want to point out something else. It's important to understand that there is no new thing under the sun. And these people were not the first to think of it. Um, as far back as I can go with where this came from, uh, the Mormons 150 years ago came up with the idea that there were three heavens, the terrestrial, the telestial, and the celestial. Now, only those who achieve godhood can go to the celestial. Uh, the, the rest of us would be stuck on one of the lower two levels, depending on how much uh, light we received and truth we believed. And, in fact, in their whole line of thinking, the only ones that go to hell... Um, would be apostate Mormons and uh, the devil and his angels. Everyone else will spend uh, their eternity in one of these three heavens. So this is akin to that. But I'm going to read something off of their website. This is from Grace Communion uh, International, www.gci.org, and it comes from the page with a title heading, Do We Teach Universalism? So let me get down here to this spot that I've now lost. Okay, here we go. Now this is coming directly from their website. The Bible does not blur the difference between believer and unbeliever, and neither should we. When we say that all people are forgiven, 
saved and reconciled in Christ, see, now here's where they carry it to a place that it ought not go. Uh, all people are forgiven, but not all are saved and reconciled to Christ. Okay, it says, when we say that all people are forgiven, saved, and reconciled in Christ, we mean that while we all belong to Christ, not all are in communion with Him. So, this is another way of saying, and the New Agers and, and such um, have taken this to, to, to change it to say, well, uh, we're all in God, we're all a part of God, uh, some just don't realize it, and they have to wake up to this realization. Now, it says, while God has reconciled all to himself, not all are yet trusting and living in that reconciliation. So the Apostle Paul says, and, and I'm going to have to read it out of the King James because they don't use the King James and uh, these false versions hurt my ears. So my apologies. Give me just a minute here to get to 2 Corinthians 5, 19 and 20. Second Corinthians 5, 19 and 20. It says, To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then are we ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. So there's still the command, which they're overlooking, by the way, that there is the command to be reconciled to God through Christ, through his shed blood on the cross. Now that is accomplished by believing on him, by, by trusting in him, his finished work on the cross and what he did. Uh, the world is not blanketly reconciled to God um, just because they're mankind. Okay, these people teach that, that Jesus did this all from before the foundation of the world. And so everybody started out this way. Adam and Eve, when they transgressed, they just lost their memory. They had a memory problem and fell into, um, I guess their minds become clouded and they could no longer remember who they were. Um, that's not what the Bible says here. Now, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, does that mean that, that Jesus became a sinner to save sinners? No. Jesus became a man. Um, he is fully God and fully man. And it means that he took upon himself all the sins of the world. They were nailed to the cross. So, what this really means for the person uh, who is an unbeliever, who has not believed the gospel, is that there's no excuse for you. You don't have any excuse. Um, Jesus Christ has already paid for all of your sin on the cross. Now what else is standing between you and him except you believing in what he did? You see, that is the false mindset of, of all these uh, heretic teachers uh, like Brian Denlinger and so many others that, that uh, backload the door with works and say, uh, faith alone is not enough. Uh, you have to repent of all your sins. You have to do all these other things um, to prove that, that you really love God and that you're worthy of, of receiving what he did. Um, and if you don't continue in those things, then you were never saved to start with, which, by the way, is Calvinism. Now, it says... Let me find it again. Um... Here's something else that they say. The biblical revelation does not offer any guarantee that all will necessarily accept God's forgiveness. It warns that there may be people who... Now, you see how they tiptoe around this? They, they tiptoe around these things. Uh, it warns that there may be people who will refuse God's love and reject redemption and the adoption He has for them. Nevertheless, it is difficult to believe that anyone would make such a choice. Obviously, from our perspective, being saved, redeemed saints, reconciled to God through the blood of Jesus Christ, 
Where does flabbergasted that people will not believe the gospel? When we present it to them and it's, it's just so simple and so straightforward and so easy that people don't just want to latch onto that right away because look at the alternative. Uh, in order to go to hell, they don't have to do anything. They're already headed there. Um, but believing the gospel um, changes their direction. Now they're not headed to hell, they're headed to heaven. Praise God. But you see the way that they tiptoe around this and say, there may be people who will refuse God's love. No, there are going to be people that refuse God's love. The Bible tells us in Revelation, uh, at the end of Revelation, look what he says. And these are terrible, terrible things, my friends. Terrible. Because uh, they don't have to do this. It says, um, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And why are they judged according to their works, my friends? It's because they don't have Christ's finished work. It's that simple. You see, when you believe on Christ, all of his righteousness, all the work that he did transfers to you. So therefore God, the Father, looks upon you clothed with the righteousness of his Son. What a beloved, wonderful place to be. But these people didn't have that. All they had was their own works. It's not going to get you very far. In fact, it tells you right here where it's going to get you. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So, uh, I'm not really sure, but... Uh, where these people stand with the hell. I don't know that they believe in hell. Um, I need to do some more studying on that. But uh, one of the major problems with this is when you tell people, oh, you're already in God. Uh, you've already been reconciled to God. You just got to remember it. And one of the things they'll do is from their perspective, since you're already in Christ, and you were from before the foundation of the world. See, not just the saints, but everybody. Uh, never mind the fact that there's two lineages. There, there is the, uh, there are those who, whose devil, whose father is the devil, and those who are the sons of God. But they'll tell you, uh, pray for the joy of salvation. Now, friend, that's something that a believer does. You know, we've had rough days and. And we'll, we'll say, Lord, please restore the joy that, that, you know, that I've had in the past and help me and uplift me and comfort me with your Holy Spirit and all these wonderful things that, that is for a believer. Um, but not so with this group, Grace Communion International. No, you, you just need to pray and ask for the joy of salvation. So there are... Uh, many errors in this and uh, the origin of it is obviously one that gets packaged up as grace but instead it doesn't save uh, because people need to hear the truth um, they need to hear that um, that they are sinners that they need salvation because the Bible says for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God there is none righteous no not one so this ministry of reconciliation that we've been given, we must be very careful and not like some of these false teachers who say, oh, God is in everybody. And then we don't give them the message that there is a hell, there is a judgment day coming, and you can avoid that if you will believe the gospel. But until you do, you are still lost. And these are hard words to say. They are. Because sometimes we have to say them to family. Sometimes we have to say them to friends. Um, Sometimes they're going to mock you and laugh at you and ridicule you, and they won't believe. But that's on them, friend. It's not on you. Um, you just need to tell them the truth. But when you tell them that God already lives in everybody, that's an easy, feel-good message that doesn't really save. Um, they need to know where they stand with God as a sinner 
and that they need Jesus Christ in their life, that they need to believe on him for salvation. And without that, they have rejected the Son of God. And that doesn't mean that God doesn't love them, but the Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. And he is angry because they have rejected his Son. And this is, this is the purest love that there can possibly be, a God that, that reaches down to mankind when, when mankind went into sin and yet has a redemption plan to save mankind. But alas, not all will believe. And the Bible tells us that, that broad is the way that leadeth unto hell. And there's going to be many that reject Jesus Christ. And that is the sad truth that this uh, Grace Communion International seeks to avoid. Till next time, God bless and take care.